Directions for your springtime porcupine. Name and teacher code on the back. Begin by adding a spread hand at the bottom of your paper so you know how high to draw your horizon line. And then you'll use a variety of crayons to add details such as grass and flowers. When you make your flowers, all you're really doing is adding circles to create the middle of the flower and the petals. And make sure that you're coloring very dark and bold when you do this. Be sure to fill the bottom part of your paper with lots of colorful flowers and you can even use different greens in the grass as well for more interest and different colors in flowers too. When you're done adding your flowers and grass at the bottom, you're ready to paint the ground and the sky. And we're using the very large brushes. Gently stir your paint and then add very large brush strokes going across the bottom and then later on the top of your paper. Don't forget to rinse very thoroughly between colors. And when you're done, grab a large piece of cardboard and carefully place it on the drying rack. Using a medium sized green paintbrush and some brown paint, you'll start adding your trees. When you add your trees, think about how a tree is wider at the bottom and then gradually gets smaller as it goes upward. Right now I'm just adding kind of the outline of my tree and it's about three fingers wide at the bottom and then it gets a little bit smaller as it goes towards the top of my paper. And I'm making my branches go all the way off the edge of my paper at the top. Then after I get kind of a Y shape for the main part of my tree, I start painting in the trunk and then adding smaller branches as well. Then I repeat this process for a second tree on the other side of my paper. Notice my tree's branches go all the way off the top of my paper and they're kind of like wobbly Y shapes. If you want, you can add more small branches. When you've completed your trees, place them on the drying rack. You have some choices for creating your porcupine. I'm gonna demonstrate both, but please just choose one for the first one, you'll start with a really tall letter U. It is almost as long as the piece of paper that I have given you. And then you're going to add kind of a V shape, but the point of the V is going to kind of wobble over to one side. And then you're gonna add an eye and the little inside part of the eye. Make sure you can fit a finger inside of the eye and a mouth. And then another U shape for one of the arms or the front foot. You should be able to fit a finger or two probably in that space. And then a couple C shapes for the feet. The other details we're going to add with paint. For the other way you can draw your porcupine, this one will be standing on all four legs, but we're gonna start drawing it the same way by creating that tall U shape again and then our kind of wobbly V shape for the top and then add the nose and the mouth, little curved line and a smile and then the eye that you should be able to fit a finger inside of. And then, don't forget, we're going to draw the legs a little bit different. So you're gonna turn your paper and you're going to make kind of an L shape or a J shape, it would be backwards of course but you're going to go ahead and add the legs that way. Make sure that you can fit your finger inside of that space. You don't wanna make the legs way too teeny tiny. And repeat this for the bottom two legs. Remember, you're just drawing one, so pick your favorite choice and draw that one. When you love all your lines, grab a black Sharpie and very carefully retrace.
Then you're going to carefully cut out your porcupine. And I like to do a bubble cut first, so that is where you don't quite cut to the black line yet. And then later on, you go back and you cut right next to that black line. The bubble cut is just helpful because it gets rid of some of that extra paper. But if you would like to do it right next to that black line the first time through, that is okay too. Just make sure to really take your time with your cutting. Then decide a good place in the grass to glue your porcupine and use small dots of glue to glue it down. And after that, you can flip your paper over and rub the back of your paper to help really get it stuck on there nicely. Once your porcupine is glued, we'll use a fork to add the porcupine quill texture. You're going to place the top of your fork kind of on the edge of your porcupine paper and then pull away from your porcupine. Go ahead and repeat this process until you have a good amount of quills on your porcupine. And you might want to add a little bit just above your porcupine's eye as well. Just be really careful so you don't accidentally get paint where you don't want it. Then you use some bubble packing to add the leaf texture on the trees. I like to take the piece and fold it so it's easier to hold onto and stamp. Then you're going to dip it in the green paint, but you don't want a lot of green paint on there because you want the shapes of the bubble wrap to show. So just a little bit of paint on there and then pat it around and fill up your tree branches with lots of leaves. Then place your project on the drying rack. 